and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, each end of these. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. How many of us are happy to be in His presence today? Hallelujah. Are we happy to be in His presence? Glory to God. Today, we're going to be dealing on the topic which says dead men walking. Hallelujah. Dead men, dead men, dead men. Hallelujah. We're going to be talking about dead men walking. Amen. Dead men walking. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Dead men walking. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. Yes. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely what? Die. Romans 5 12. And by, and by the hands of the apostles, oh sorry. Romans. Romans. Romans 5, 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all <coughs> sin. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Dead men walking. Dead men, and if you if you are not new in this place, you will know what we mean by dead men walking. According to where we have read now, we have read two read two places, Genesis two verse seventeen. He said, "The day you shall eat of this fruit, you shall surely what die." And so therefore, Adam died the day he ate that fruit. The day he ate that fruit, Adam did what die. Hallelujah. And now, was Adam living? Yes. That's why we say the topic dead man. Adam was dead, but yet he was walking. So today we have dead men walking. If you are not with Christ, because we are getting to a level, if you are not with Christ, which is life, you are a dead man walking. Hallelujah. We read in Romans 5, verse 12. It says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men. Somebody say, All. All, all men. Death passed upon all men. That means all men are dead. Without Christ, you are a dead man walking. And I know that every one of us that have been with me understand this concept when I say dead man walking. Because if you don't have Christ, you are a dead man. You might be living. You might be walking on the street. You might be walking. You might be doing all what kinds you want to do. But if you don't have life, you are dead. Hallelujah. And that's why we have dead men walking all around. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Dead men were walking. Adam ate the fruit that God said he shouldn't eat. And because of that, death was passed to all men. Sin produced death. And death was passed to all men. Amen. 
Praise Master Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we got to we got to know this concept that if you are not with Christ, you are a dead man walking. And I, I, and uh, I pity so many Christians that try to compare themselves with those that are without Christ. I pity those that don't know themselves. I pity Christians that doesn't know who they are. You are, you, are, you are comparing yourself with a dead man that is walking. Hallelujah. The Bible says Jesus is life. We are getting to that place. When we say dead man walking, it means that the person is, is walking but is dead. The Bible says uh, Adam lived about 900 years. But was he alive? He was not alive. But yet he lived for now. That means it's not a matter of how you lived your life. That is not life. Adam lived so many years, even when the Bible says that the day you shall eat the fruit, you shall die. What was he saying? Life of God is out of him. Because life is a person. Somebody says a person. Life is what? A person. Life is a person. Sometimes you say, come and give your life to Christ. You don't have life you want to give to Christ. Come and accept life. So that life will come to you. Because you were a dead man walking. Hallelujah. Now you need life for you to sustain. That's the reason why people die like foul. And it's an error for a Christian to die like a foul. Because why? You have life. Anyone that does not have life can die like foul because why? He does not have life. He can be kicked and roll like football because why? He or she does not have life. He's a dead man walking. He can do whatever he wants to do on earth, but as long as he does not have life, life, we talk about life, life is a person. The person of Jesus. The Bible says in John chapter 11. He said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. And if you believe in me, you shall have life. And you shall live forever. Somebody say forever. Because what? Jesus is life. Life is a person. Life is not it is not this Bible that we're reading. And that's why the Bible says, Jesus himself said it in John chapter 5, verse 39. He said, this book testify of me, which is the eternal life. Because eternal life is a person. Eternal life is not just what you get from here as you read. Eternal life is a person. Eternal life, so that when you receive Jesus, you receive life. And that's the reason why your life cannot be taken by anybody because the life you are living is not just a life of is a person. Somebody says a person. A person. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the reason it cannot be snatched. Your life, because that life is Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. That life, you were not having life before. If you have not given your life to Christ, I want to tell anyone that does not that have not accepted Jesus. As your Lord and personal Savior, you don't have life. You are a dead man walking. And so you need Jesus for you to have life. Because Jesus is life. And so when Jesus comes in you, now you have life. Somebody say, I have life. Somebody say, I have life in me. Hallelujah. I have life in me. And that life is the light of man. Let's see John chapter 11 where we quoted just now. Because I always like us to always see it from the world. I can show you in thousands of places in the Bible where Jesus is the life itself. Is a definite article. Let's see that bit. John chapter 11 verse 20. Praise God. Let me, let me take it myself. Amen. John chapter 11 verse 25. Jesus said unto her, I am. He did not say 
through me you will resurrect. He's personalizing it. Hallelujah. I am the what? The resurrection. And and what? The death. The, 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 it knows a life. I am the a definite article. I'm the life. Someone said the life. the life. I am the resurrection. I am the life. He is the life. And so therefore, if you have Christ, who is that person I want to take down your life? Who I want to take Jesus? Is anyone? He is the life. And so when you don't have Jesus, you don't have life. He said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Definite article. He doesn't say, I will give you life. I am himself. It's not like you say, who are you? You say, I'm Evangelist Chibuzo. Who are you, my brother John? Jesus now say, I am the life. Someone say, I am the life. Jesus is the life of God. So when Adam and Eve sinned, that life, they misplaced that life. Because that life is a person. That life was inside that garden. God expected them to choose that life. That was the tree of life. There was a tree of life in that place. That is Jesus. He was the life. And so at that moment that Adam was, he was not actually having that internal life. He was having one life which has to, it was on the process to have the internal life. But he decided not to have it. But today, everyone that have Jesus have that internal life. Have that life. Somebody say life. He said, I am the life. And he went down and says, he that believeth in me, though he be yeah, dead, what shall what? Shall he live? Yet shall he what live? And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Katone sukata shall never what die because. Jesus can never die. And so when you have life, Jesus, you can never die. He said, whosoever that believes in me shall live forever. And when we're talking about eternal life, it means right from now. It's not when your, the body goes down. No, right from now. There are people that they won't even see this death. They will, they will be transformed as they are alive. They will transform and meet the, the spirit in the air. And so the life that you have is Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. You have the life of Jesus. And so now, how can somebody boastfully say he wants to take that life? He won't die with that. Mammy said he won't die. Maybe doctor will boast say he wants to take your life. He won't die with that because the life that you want to take is Jesus. No people, people of God, are we getting this? Yes. This is the reason why you should not be afraid of anybody. As I always said it, and I boastfully still say it. For accident to take place, say me one die. That means that car will vanish. I'm saying, I'm boastfully saying it. Because what? I know who I am. You cannot snatch my life. Because the life is Jesus. That life I have. Is Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That life, you, if you know this, is, let me tell you. But sometimes it rings in your mind now. What is, what is happening to Christians? Why are they dying like fowls? Because they don't know. The knowledge you know, the things you know, makes you free. Jesus is your life. Now, when Babala woke, we call your name there and said, begin to mention your name. You want that, that. Because what? The life that you have is who? Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. He said, I am the life. I am the life. The Bible says that the life became flesh. The life was manifested. First John 1 from 1 to 3. He said, we touch the word of life. That life manifested. That life became human. That means Jesus was life. He was in person. That is, he is the life of God. So when you have Jesus, you have the life of what? 
God. All what it takes. That's why Jesus is the embodiment of God. Jesus carries everything because he is the life of God. Praise Master Jesus. Tell somebody I have the life of God. Tell somebody I have the life of God. I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God in me. I have the spirit of the Son of God. I have the life of God. You have the life. I have the life of God. Let say, come on. I have the life of God in me. I have the spirit of the Son of God. I have the life of God in me. Again, I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God in me. I have the spirit of the Son of God. I have the life of God in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Master Jesus. He said, although you were dead. Weird, weird means past tense. Weird. That when you are reading the Bible, always look to the tenses. If you want to understand the Bible very well, look to the tenses. Very important. He said, even when you were, where is what? Past tense. Even when you were dead. Now that you have accepted Jesus, life has come to you. Life has come to tabernacle in you. Life has come to live in you because life is a person. Life is not the life you are living right now. Life is a person. Somebody says a person. You may be saying you are living a life without Jesus. You are not living a life because life is a person. When the life comes to tabernacle in you, your life will never remain the same. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. When he comes to dwell in you. And you are conscious of it. And you know about it. Oh my God. I tell you there is nothing better than that. That knowing. Knowing that the life of God has come to dwell in you. Now let's see First John. First John 2. First John 1. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Glory to God. First John chapter 1. From 1 to... Just read for us from 1 to 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, our eyes which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, yes, Mm -hmm. for, the, for the life was manifested mm -hmm. and we have seen it uh -huh. and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father mm -hmm. and was manifested unto us. Do you see it now? That they are talking about a person here, not just the way we are saying life or live life. And they live life. The person they think, you want to come and give your life. They are talking about somebody here. He said the word of life which they have. They touch. And that life manifested. The life of God became a human. Jesus. I always tell you people, Christianity is not just accept Jesus and that's all. Christianity is more than that. Christianity is more than that. Accepting just Jesus. Accepting Jesus means you have accepted life. Life has come to dwell in you. You said we handle that life. We touch that life. That life manifested to us. The life became flesh. Just as the John says said, the word of God. Because the word of God is life. The word of God became what? Flesh. And dwelled among what? Among men. The word, the, the, the life of God became a human being like you just to give you life just to give you that life he said the bible says he said the devil came to steal to kill and to destroy but i have come to give you life and life in what in abundance life in abundance he has come to give you life not just not just giving you an inch not just giving you 10 percent of it just as some of us believe, we give 10%. No, like Jesus has come to give you 
100% of God's life. He has come to, he's a person, he's not like a measure. Get to know this. You know, like water, we measure water. Is that not true? And okay, uh, please, can you give me some water? You measure the water, and like that bottle there is 50 cl. We have one liter. We have uh, we have five liters. We have we, we have 20 liters. These are measurement of liquids and all that. But Jesus is a what a person. So there's no measurement. If he comes to dwell in you, he is the person that has come to dwell in you. One of his hand not come to dwell in your body. Praise the Lord. You accept that Jesus and you think oh, maybe only the head come to dwell in you. Or only the leg. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. Or only the hand come to dwell. The person itself, which is life, has come to do what? To dwell in you. And so when that person is dwelling in you, you must be conscious of this life. Praise God. You must be conscious of this life. You must be conscious of this life that has come to dwell in you. And you must, you, you must have boldness. Stop comparing yourself with those dead men walking. You are seeing many dead and you are doing the same thing what they do. When they are dead, they don't have life. And you are comparing yourself with them. Tell somebody, God forbid. God forbid. Tell somebody, God forbid. God forbid. Because you are not dead. You're not dead. So why compare yourself with a dead man that does not have Christ? Because Jesus is life. So when you don't have Jesus, it's assumed that you are dead and you are walking. Dead man was walking. You know, Kaname sometimes does not understand these things. How can somebody be living and say the person is dead? How can somebody be driving the best car in the world and say it is dead? How can somebody have the best mansion, the biggest mansion, and yet you say he is dead? Those things are temporal. For the temporal things, for those things that we see, they are temporal. But the things that are internal, we don't see them. You don't see them with your optical eyes. So you don't evaluate a man by what he has. You don't evaluate a man by the material things that he has. You evaluate a man by who he is. And that person of Jesus is in that person. And so when you are, want to evaluate a child of God, you evaluate Jesus. The price and the value of Jesus is equivalent to every child of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're equivalent. You know everybody has a word. Amen. If I ask you now, what is your word? What is your word? Will you know? Can you please tell me your word? What is your word? My word is I got that I want fullness. You cannot Christ. use one word. Christ. My word. word Jesus Christ. That's your word. Whatever Jesus is, is your word. That's what you want. If Jesus what heavens and the earth, that is your word. Because why? He said, life came to dwell in you. So now that life that you have has all it takes. Someone say all it takes. All it has all, all the fullness. No wonder. Because every time, every time, when I continue reading this word of God, sometimes I say, God, that you are just too much. He said, in him you are complete. In him, in him, you are what? Complete. No, 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 nothing is taken out. There's no measure. In Him, you are complete. You are complete. And whatever it takes for you to live a life on earth, holy life, or whatsoever, for you to be, for you to be an overcomer, is in you. Somebody say it's in me. Because that life, that person, that person of, of the person Jesus, did not just give you only hand. He came by himself and dwells in you. He tabernacle in you. So whatever Jesus can do, you can do the same. And that's why he said, greater things shall you do. More even greater things. Because what? He is that same person that he the sick. He is that same person that raised the dead. So that same person came to dwell in you. 
Have you seen the, the possessing somebody? Have you seen have you seen spirit of demons trying to possess somebody? Jesus entered you. The moment you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, Jesus did what? Entered you. And as he entered you, now he is dwelling in you. Now from you he is acting. Now you are now his hand. You are his leg. You are his everything that you do. Because why? That life is now in where? In you. So this, when I think about this, sometimes I say, who is that bastard? Who is that bastard that will say me? He wants to take my life. That's not possible. That means you want to take my life. You want to take Jesus with that. Because Jesus is the life that I have. Me, I don't have life. The life that I have is Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Somebody say Jesus is the life that I have. So no man can take it from me. Because Jesus is the life that I have. He's the life that you have. If you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, he said, though you were dead, though you were dead, now I am the resurrection. He has come to dwell in you. So therefore, on that last day, because resurrection dwell in you, their body will rise up. Because what? There is resurrection in you. Hallelujah. There is resurrection in you. He is a person. Praise Master Jesus. Glory to God. When we understand this, we will cry for those that have not accepted Jesus. You think you are living a life. You that have not accepted Jesus, you think you are living a life. You don't have life. You are dead. Come and let's give you life. Let's introduce life to you because the life of God is who? Jesus Christ. But we as Christians must know some certain things. In fact, let's go to that John 1 1. John chapter 1. Praise Master Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, I'm, only, I'm so excited. Anytime I read the word of God, anytime I come across all these things, in fact, I'm so excited that I said, people, if you know what you have, if you know what is in you, in fact, the devil cannot try you. He cannot come close to you. Because why? He knows the greater one dwells in me. Hallelujah. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the world. Uh-huh. And the world was God. Uh-huh. And the world was God. Uh-huh. Yes, that form. was life, and the life was the light of men. Uh huh. Verse five. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended the evil. Hallelujah. Now I want you to pause for a while. In Him was life. He was the life. Now that life dwells in you. That life is the light. Of men. I hope anybody is close and I'm just saying you should off this light. So when you off this light, we are in total darkness. Don't worry. When you off this light, we are in, there, in total darkness. That means in your family, you are their saving. As we are in Fulabra now, we are the men that hold this light. They tell me, ah, but you just come to your uncle, you close to close to police. Even the government, the, the one that came the other day and told me to ask, what do you think I am? They are physical police, we are spiritual police. We are the one that takes care of this <laughs> arena. It's not it's not loud. Like we are the one. They arrest people when they do anyhow. We arrest demons if they do anyhow. Yes now. You don't know who you are. They arrest demons when they when, when they arrest people. Natural people if they do anyhow. We when demons do anyhow, we arrest them. We say, okay, move. And he moves. <laughs> Somebody praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, that is it. We make decrees. You know, sometimes they, they fire cases to God. We we fire cases to our heavenly God. When it gets to that case, God, Holy Spirit is the advocate. God, this person you must set them free. 
we begin to quote the word of God. That is who we are. He said, the life, that life is the light of men. That life, that life, that's you, you now, you, you that have that life, you are the light of men. So that means you are the light when you come to any environment, everywhere they come to shine. When the darkness is there before the darkness goes shift, we go, why? Light don't come. Just like this place, when we walk this place now, darkness everywhere. Now, the moment light comes, darkness will shift. Likewise you, the life of God is in you. And that life is the light of man. And so therefore, anybody that wants to be your friend is, is, is a privilege for him. Get to know this. I always tell people, I say, if, you, if me, I'm indispensable. If you go, go. Come me. I am a light. When I come close to you, things will begin to move. And that's everybody for us. Because the life of God in you is the light of me. So therefore, you becoming a light of people, it means you are a blessing. It means that anybody you shake your hands with is blessed. It means that anybody you make friends with his life is turned around forever. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what it means. That's what it means. That the life, the life, that life is the light of man. That life, that life is the light of man. You can speak forth and it come to pass. Because what? You have life in you. And that life is the light that your family used to see. That means you can associate yourself with people. And because of you, that family is ready to be saved. How many of us know this? Even the Bible said, he said, your children, because of you, your children are sanctified. That means because of you, you are in any, I can be in a bus. I, I even when I went to Nigeria, I said, me, as long as I'm inside this bus, everybody inside this bus is saved. As long as you, me, I'm in any way, that book, the Bible says in Act of Apostle, when there was a tumbling storm with Paul and others, you know they put Paul up, joined with the prisoners, they were taking them to, to Rome, and something came up. There was a mighty wind, and Paul says, don't worry. Because the angel of the Lord spoke to me that we all get there safely. Yeah. Hallelujah. And actually, it was like that. Everybody there, but it was, it was, it was this thing. Everybody was afraid. And at the end, as Paul said, that was it. They get out safely. Why? There was a man. There's a man inside there that have life. And that life is the light that all of them used to see. That man was born. And who are you? I want to let you know. Don't look at the things. Don't look at the physical things. Because the physical things are temporal. The physical things are temporal. The things that you don't see, they are internal. If you say you don't have this, but you have life. Tell somebody, I have life. You may not have resident, I have life. You may not have a car, I have life. You may not have a child, I have life. You may not have a husband, I have life. You may not have a house, I have life. I have life that no one can take from me. You might disturb me, you may say I will not have a car, but I have life. Ah, you might say, you might say that business is not going to work, but I have Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet. Amen.